Carl here from Metal Wani and joining me today is a stunningly talented woman with a voice that is simply inimitable. She is the face of symphonic metal giants Nightwish and more recently her much beloved Northward. I am stoked to be here with none other than the wonderful Floor Janssen. Floor, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out today. Yeah, thank you too. Good to be here. <laughs> my, uh, my, my pleasure is all mine. The pleasure is all mine. So let's talk about your upcoming Northward debut with uh, Jorn Vigo. The self-titled album, you know, first of all, it is stunningly good. So congratulations to you all on that. Uh, thank you. It is also uh, due for release rather soon on October 19th uh, through Nuclear Blast. But fans may or may not be aware of this, but despite its 2018 release, this record has actually been in the pipeline for a decade now. So that's a long time to have an album in the vault um, tell me a bit about Northward's inception or origin and what it was that took this long for it all to finally come to fruition yeah well indeed it was written back in 2008 um, I had a year off back then from my band I had at the time called Laughter Forever uh, and after more than 10 years of symphonic metal with that band uh, I wanted to use that year off of that to to explore a different genre, and I wanted to make a rock album. Now I have that in in mind. It 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 wasn't really set in stone like I'm going to do that. Uh, also because I um, I didn't know with who. <laughs> so when I met Iron Vigo in uh, actually in the states with uh, this Proper USA festival, um, yeah. It seemed that I met the right person because we, we played all these covers and he played a lot of different kinds of styles of music and showed his versatility. And despite it being a prog festival, it was clear to me that he was a great rock guitar player. And uh, I also later from heard from him he played uh, and sang, of, um, uh, wrote music for Irlanda, a great uh, rock singer from Norway. So I was like, hey, um, would you like to write something with me? He said yes to that, and when we checked if we would have a good chemistry, um, not just on stage, but also with writing, uh, yeah, we continued writing and actually finished that album, with, of course, the intention to release it. However, the break with After Forever did not, um, uh, yeah, was not just a break, it became a permanent stop, and all of a sudden I had no band left. Um, and because of this, um, the contract, the record company contract we almost signed for, for Northward was cancelled and I did not want a side project in rock to become my next new thing. Um, so we had to put it on hold for the time being until I could get a new band going and well I did but before I knew it I joined also Nightwish and time was not there. <laughs> <laughs> sure, of course. And time just went by uh, with that laying around until um, a Nightwish announced a year off in 2017. And um, I contacted Jerry Vigo again in 16. Like, hey, I'm going to have a year off from my band again. Would you like to finish this, this album with me? I would never have the time to write something new, but if the material would still feel up to date, we can fix it and record it and... Yeah, and that's what we did, and that's why it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Well, thank you for a very, a very detailed and wonderful backstory there. And what I found yeah. listening to the record was, uh, well, I found a couple of things, but one of which was that these songs were written, as you said, 10 years ago, but they still sound so fresh and alive, like uh, like they were all composed in the last year, because sometimes bands dig up stuff that they've left on the shelf, and truth be told, there's times you can kind of feel it, but not here. Mm -hmm. And that must have been really cool for you guys to go back and feel these songs still work for me they still have a pulse you know so much so that you're doing this now so are these songs that made the record all from the previous sessions back in 2008 or are there any numbers you've added since resurrecting northward no actually they are all from from back in the days and indeed it was true it really felt like damn this really really would be a pity it always felt that way but as time went by you you start to think maybe it's just, it's it's something I had in, in my head and now that I've moved on and I learned more and, and for the both of us evolved as, as persons as musicians maybe maybe it doesn't feel that way at all anymore but but it really did and as we went more into details into the the, the, the project it was really like yeah there is not much we need to do we 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 added a few things and left out a few things um, naturally as you do also when you start recording 
Um, one lyric was completely rewritten, which which is, which is the last track on the album, uh, the title track, Northward. And there was one melody to a chorus we really changed. Um, the rest was relatively small adjustments, um, but no new songs at all. Uh, and it's even so that the drums uh, here on the album were recorded back in 2008. That's very cool. And, you know, I don't want to give too much away about the record, but one of my personal favorite songs from it is Storm in a Glass. First of all, because mm-hmm. it is just a beautifully crafted piece of music on all fronts. Um, but also, Thank you. <laughs> of course, I'm just, it's the truth. Uh, but also <laughs> because it was the point in the album that it hit me that I was very much experiencing uh, another dimension to you, Floor. I think for me, you know, it would be fair to say to people coming into Northward for the first time that they shouldn't do so with any, you know, preconceptions of you because this doesn't necessarily reflect you know your your work with Nightwish would you agree with this do you think it's reasonable to say yeah definitely and it was also the intention to not do something that I already did already 10 years ago and uh, well 10 years later even more like you know you've been hearing me in After Forever in revamp and most will know me from, from Nightwish um, um, if I do a project it would be nice if it is not within the same style and I go ahead and experiment in, in a different direction. It's still me so you'll you'll recognize me anyway. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely the intention to, to you have to make a rock album and so that's how it sounds like <laughs> and that's something that uh, you know it's it's a color in the voice that I do use. Uh, have used in, in revamp and, and even bring out in Nightwish here and there when a song requires it that kind of you know approach but of course on this album it comes out to its full power and that was really really nice to tap into well you tapped into it wonderfully because it's a great rock record on, as i said on all fronts musically and vocally and when we you Thank know you. You look, when you talk about all the projects you had going you know nightwish after forever and of course northwood i don't think it's too much of a stretch to say that you know especially given you know nightwish your prime concern and northwood now that the two will face a very different set of challenges to one another respectively you know the two bands started uh, kind of at different t- you know at different times because you're you're bringing northwood now and so much has changed with regards to how we create distribute and promote music and so on so my question for you floor kind of consists of two parts the first being is northwood like is it a fun outlet for you or is it something you want to take as far as it can go and if so do you already foresee a very different set of challenges than say the ones nightwish face or are you faced with nightwish um well it was definitely a fun thing to do which which i think in general is one of the most important reasons to do something um which could also make it sound as if it's it was a fun project and i don't need to to do anything of course um it's definitely a side project and uh, given the, the the size of nightwish um i can't really have a band with this it's simply too too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had that with Revamp. I could not really keep that alive because in a band, people really wait for yeah for each other. You know, you have you you have to do things together, and I couldn't. So um, in that sense, it was very uh, very clear that I couldn't continue. And so the same thing will happen with Northward. I have no idea where this will take me, um, but. So it was fun to release, fun to finish. I would have been ashamed to not do it because I, we also really felt that this is an album too good to just let it lay around, be on our computer and just there. Um, but but what the future will bring, I really don't know. <laughs> That's fair enough. And, and I'm, I'm really glad you didn't leave it sitting on the laptop either. <laughs> no. <laughs> And you know, you know, when we talk about you know, the, you know, the challenges, uh, you know, the industry and stuff like that. Um, one of the things I find fascinating, and that there is a variety of opinion on, is the idea that music has an addiction to its own past. Especially now, many many feel it's in a state of retromania. That you know, there are a shortage of forward-thinking musicians or artists. Is this something you'd be inclined to agree or disagree with, Floor? Well, I find that very hard to answer because there are plenty of people that 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 really want to stick to to what they do, mm-hmm. and often their type of music has the kind of fans that also want to just hear the same thing as they did on all their other records. Um, and then there are people who like to experiment more, and there's there are people who want to hear different kinds of things from their favorite artists. So I, I think it's hard to to really say there's a certain current of 
of something, um, in, in my opinion, anyway. Uh, I would be inclined to agree. I suppose um, if we just refer to, say, newer artists or newer bands, is there anybody out there doing something that you haven't heard before, or uh, are you still waiting for that band to come out? Not really, no. I think there were a lot of things that, that are out there, and if you just want to do something else for the sake of doing something else, it doesn't very often doesn't mean it sounds any better. I've heard some very experimental stuff that I was like, yes, but no. Uh, A for effort, but uh, no. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> more me. than fair. That's more than fair. There's plenty of people who, you know, who've answered that question, so don't worry about that. Yeah, but it's, it's at the same time, it's sometimes you hear something come out and it's like, really? Are we chewing on this again? It's 13 in a dozen and phew. so actually often the, the the difference is the thing that makes something original lies in in details way more than in changing the entire concept uh, and that's very interesting to, to to see and hard to put your finger on and to describe and of course it's always something else that does it but uh, I think it's way more in that that's really like yeah damn I haven't heard that before because I've never heard this particular singer before or this band with this type of songwriting which is actually nothing new but it just brought something to the table that I haven't heard before and I like it I, I think what you're saying is fascinating and I'd, I'd 100% agree with you on everything there and you know when you Thank take you. The, when you take the current state of the industry the uncertain future of the digital era you know do you think it's going to adapt and balance itself out or do you foresee something a little more bleak ultimately I suppose are you confident or concerned for the future of rock metal and music culture overall I think um, I think music is being consumed if you look at it, look at it from a product point of view, more than ever before, communication about music is stronger than ever. There is more to do about it than ever. Mm -hmm. That's what digital also brought. There's just not a very fair economic system behind it that works on a on an on a worldwide level. So I hope that people whose job that is they get to figure it out. At the same time, musicians will always need music. Uh, that's, that's like breathing you'll do that anyway I um, but I do agree that the, the industry is pretty sick from the inside out and is radically changing as it has been doing in the last 20 years or more but definitely in my my career time um, things have really changed constantly and I think uh, for the better in the end of the day yeah you think so yeah, I think so, because the way it was was not good either. <laughs> Fair. It's, just, it's not generally the answer I get, so it's nice to hear that every so often a change. Yeah, but if you think about the, the, the old days, all the stories about the artist that gets fucked over by their managers or record labels, if, if money is power, money was always with, with people... Um, who for some reason made more money on, on artists than the artists themselves. Um, and so there was this power that the record labels and managers, they were institutes, um, and, and so, so, so powerful because of this money that, um, yeah, I remember our first contract being completely shit. We knew it wasn't fair, but we signed it anyway because that was the way things were. Right. In that sense, I think things changed when the record labels started to lose their money and artists at the same time started to, sh to smart up a bit. And um, um, so in that sense, things are getting more fair. But as long as people download music for nothing or for Spotify prices, um, there, there is something out of balance there as well. So it's an ongoing process, which I kind of really hope will get better. And if you look at record sales, you get really sad. But if you look at the the, the ticket sales, you get really happy. And if you see what's happening online, um, that's really great. It's just, it's still a bit of anarchy there. <laughs> sure, of course. And now, Floyd, thank you so much for talking. I'm not going to keep you too much longer. It's just finally, I can't leave you without asking, uh, you know, is, are you able to pierce any of the anticipation amongst fans with regards to, you know, future plans for, for Nightwish? Is there anything in the pipeline? Any writing material? What's going on with you there? What can you share? <laughs> well, we are in the middle of a world tour. That's course, where we yes. are at. Um, so that is our first and foremost concern to do that for well. We'll uh, leave to South America next week, and um, we'll st we'll still have our European um, arena tour coming up in November, December. Um, 
but the one was our songwriter and uh, keyboard player and main man uh, has been very creative already and uh, has been collecting a lot of material over the course of the last two years so um, next year we'll start uh, uh, working on that material and record it and in 2020 we'll start with a brand new world tour wonderful well Flora listen thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me the best of luck with Nightwish and Northward because it's a great record and I wish you the thank very you. best of luck for the rest of the year and beyond and I hope to chat with you again soon well wonderful thank you too so much this was really really great and uh, the best to you too thank and, you and uh, until we meet again until we meet again <laughs> it was my pleasure have a great evening thank you you too goodbye bye